All right, story time. So about a year and a half or two years ago, we were in a lockdown here and I decided to take it upon myself to cut my own bangs, which went catastrophically wrong. And like anybody having the worst hair day of their entire life, I decided to make the bold move to record a video and post it up on YouTube for the entire world to watch. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'm gonna to link to it up here and down there, but the topic of the video was 20 things I don't buy or pay for. And to my shock and dismay, people seem to actually wanna watch that video, so nothing I can do. But with that said, it is now 2023, and I figured that now would be as good a time as any to follow up that video with a whole new list of 20 more items that I am not buying or paying for or owning in 2023. So without any further ado, let's jump right into that list. The very first item that I don't buy or pay for is food delivery. I'm talking specifically about those apps like Uber Eats or Skip the Dishes or Grubhub. In fact, I have never used any of those apps. While we all know that ordering food from a restaurant is significantly more expensive than cooking at home, we've talked about that a million times, what a lot of people don't recognize is that specifically ordering food through those apps is significantly more expensive still than just ordering from a restaurant otherwise. Sure, you have to pay a delivery fee and you have to pay a convenience fee for using the app and you have to tip your driver, but over and above all of that, restaurants mark up their food items about 30% within those apps versus just calling them directly or going straight to their website. And the reason for that is that companies like Uber and Skip the Dishes actually charge the restaurant a premium for being able to host their products on that app and therefore that premium charge is passed on to you. When all is said and done, after you account for all of those fees, ordering food delivery can sometimes be twice as expensive as going and picking up your food at the restaurant on your own. So what might be an $8 burrito after the markup, the delivery fee, the service fee, the tip, is easily $15 or $16, which is absurd. So while 99% of the time I tend to cook my own meals at home anyways, on the odd occasion that I do want to get food from a restaurant, I'm definitely not going to be doing so through those apps. Understandably, it may not be as feasible for you to go pick up your own food if you don't drive or if you don't have a car. And I don't mean for this to sound judgmental, but I would be inclined to argue that if you're in a position right now where you can't afford to have a car, you're also in a position where you can't afford to be paying twice as much as you need to for lunch. The second item that I don't buy or pay for or own is a travel mug or reusable water bottle. Something that I think a lot of people seem to overlook is that any bottle can be a reusable water bottle. All you have to do is just reuse it. Any cup can be a travel cup if you travel with it in your hand. It's blowing my mind how over the last few years, a number of brands like Yeti and Clean Canteen and probably a couple others that I'm forgetting have actually made it trendy to spend an excessive amount of money on a water bottle or on a coffee mug. In fact, I made an entire video about this back in the summer, uh, which I'll link to up here in the description box down below as well. But basically it's now become an accessory to carry around a $50 water bottle. And to me, that's crazy. So when I'm going out of the house, I take a mason jar, I fill it halfway with ice and I fill the rest of it with water or I fill it with iced coffee or with whatever other drink I wanna bring with me. I put a lid on it and I'm good to go. If I drop it, if I break it, if I lose it, I don't care, it was like a dollar. But there is no way that I'm gonna be spending some excessive amount of money on a fancy reusable coffee cup or water bottle or anything of that sort. The third item on my list is a bit of a controversial one, probably one that's not gonna work for everybody, but it is dog grooming. My dog Levi does indeed have the kind of fur that requires grooming, but in addition to the fact that grooming is very expensive for dogs, it's also very stressful. And so while yes, I absolutely wanna save money, more importantly, I just don't want anybody hurting him or upsetting him, and so I've learned to groom him myself. I'm certainly no professional, I'm not about to open up a doggy salon any day soon, but he's a really good boy, he's really tolerant of whatever it is that I need to do to him, and so I've learned to groom him myself, which saves me hundreds of dollars every year, and more importantly, saves me a lot of stress and a lot of heartache, knowing that it's saving him a lot of stress and heartache as well. The fourth item on my list here is going to be what I call single-use hobby items. I'm gonna use that as an umbrella term to cover everything from books, to puzzles, to Legos, basically anything where you go and you invest a lot of money in it, you use it very quickly, and then you're done with it. Like you go when you spend 20 or $30 on a book and you read it in a day or two, and then it's done. Or you go and you spend $100 on a Lego set and you knock it out in one weekend, and now you're just stuck with this $100 piece of plastic and what are you gonna do with it? So I say this as somebody who does like to read and does like to do puzzles and really enjoys Legos too, to be honest, but I've just found that the cost per use is very, very high and then you're stuck with this thing and it has no functional use to you after that point. So here's a little pro tip. If you go on Facebook, I can almost guarantee that wherever in the world you live, you will find what is called a swap group or a buy nothing group. And basically there are groups where people are happy to give away or trade their books, their puzzles, all sorts of things like that that they are done with and that they're happy to pass on to somebody else for free or in exchange for another one. 
Through these groups, I've managed to amass dozens upon dozens of books and jigsaw puzzles and all sorts of other cool things like that without having to put any money up front. I can use them at my own pace and then when I'm done with them, I can just pass them along to somebody else so somebody else can enjoy them. I know that personally when I'm really into a book, I can easily power through that entire thing in like a day or two and it's just not really reasonable for me to go and buy a brand new book several times every week. So I like to use these swap groups and of course there's always libraries available as well. Item number five that I don't buy or own or pay for are fake plants. I think that over the last couple of years, it's become quite trendy to have house plants. I have a few, not a ton, but I have one there and one there and one or two upstairs as well. And I quite enjoy them. Having plants in your home brings a nice pop of color. It brings some natural elements into what is otherwise an unnatural environment. And I think that they're fun to care for, but a fake plant doesn't really do any of those things. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to take care of. They don't grow, they don't change and they look fake, they look tacky, they just, they're dust collectors really. If you have them in the kitchen, they get greasy when you cook. And I really just don't see the point. Adding on to that, the fact that in some cases a fake plant costs more than a real plant, it's gonna be a no for me. It's definitely a no for me, darling. Item number six is one that I could easily go on a tangent about, and I'm gonna try to resist the urge to do so, but it is extended warranties. Extended warranty? How can I lose? Extended warranties are not something that companies offer to you as a favor, as a good gesture from their heart. Extended warranties are by and large a scam. Companies offer them because they are betting on the fact that you are gonna pay for them and then never utilize them. And so it's an easy upsell for them to get you to pay them more money for nothing. I'm sure we've all had an unfortunate situation where we've broken or damaged something and wished we had had a warranty to help us out. But the fact is that if you think about all of the items that you've purchased over the past year or five years or even 10 years, and you think about how much money you would have spent if you had bought extended warranties on all of them, I can pretty much guarantee that it's gonna cost you significantly less just to repair or replace that one broken item out of pocket. And on a similar line of thought, item number seven that I don't pay for is pet insurance. Again, this one's gonna be a little bit controversial, but insurance companies are for-profit companies. And so they are largely betting on the fact, once again, that you are gonna pay them more money than they are gonna pay back out to you. They're not charities. They don't exist to do you a favor. They exist to make money. Whether or not it makes sense for you to get pet insurance is largely dependent on your financial situation, as well as on your specific pet and any predisposition to medical issues that they may or may not have. But generally speaking, you're gonna be paying more out of pocket every month than you're likely to recoup on a long-term basis. I've personally kept track of all of the veterinary invoices that I've ever had since I brought Levi home, and I've compared it to what it would have cost me had I had pet insurance this whole time, and I've come out ahead year after year after year. About a year and a half ago, he was diagnosed with a heart condition, and now in the last little while, it's become quite expensive with his medications and all of the tests that he needs. And though it hurts all at once to put that money out of pocket, the truth is that over the last 10 years, I'm still far ahead. With that said, if you're in a situation where you'd have to pick between taking your animal to the vet or buying groceries for your family, it might actually make sense for you to have insurance. But I think that for most people, it makes more sense just to have a little separate savings account and just transfer like 40 or $50 a month into that savings account and put it aside. So if you need it, it's there. And if you don't need it, you haven't just given it to an insurance company for no reason. The eighth thing that I don't buy or pay for or own are things that I don't have a designated spot for in my home. So when I'm going out to buy something, the very first thing that I ask myself is where in my house is this item gonna go? And if there isn't an obvious place where it belongs or there isn't a space for it or I know I don't have room for it, chances are that I don't really need it and I shouldn't be buying it. I personally really hate clutter on the kitchen counters. I hate clutter on the coffee table. I like my surfaces to be clear and clean. And if I'm buying something knowing farewell that I have no idea where it's gonna go, it's probably something I should just leave on the shelf at the store and walk away. The ninth item that I don't own and don't really have any intention of owning in the future is a toaster. This is probably gonna be an unpopular opinion, but I don't particularly like toast in most situations. I feel like making toast is like taking fresh bread and intentionally making it hard and stale. Maybe that's a controversial hot take, but I'm just not a big fan of toast. I like my bread fresh, I like it soft, I like it fluffy. Uh, and on the odd occasion that I do wanna toast something, I can just use the broiler inside my oven. I don't really need a designated appliance just for that purpose. Speaking of which, item number 10 that I don't buy or own are niche kitchen gadgets. I think that there are a lot of kitchen gadgets that have become really trendy that really aren't necessary. They're things that have one designated use, but that you can often do the same thing with something you already have. Like I don't see the need to have a designated tomato knife. Actually, I don't even like tomatoes, so that's kind of moot altogether. Uh, I don't see the need to have a pizza wheel to cut a pizza. You can cut a pizza with literally any knife. 
Similarly, an air fryer is really just a convection oven, and my oven already has a convection setting, so I don't need a separate appliance for that either. It seems like every year or two, there's like a new kitchen item that everybody thinks is life-changing and that they have to have, and then six months later, they forget about it and move on to the new thing. So there was like the Nutribullet, and then there was an Instant Pot, and then there's an air fryer, and it's just like, calm down, you know, calm down. We can all cook just fine. We've all cooked for years before any of these things ever existed, and I think we continue on just fine without them. Item number 11, 11, let's do it this way, 11, that I don't buy or pay for or own are things that are on sale. And of course, if I'm actually gonna plan to buy something, I wanna try to find a sale, I wanna try to find the best price that I can, but I don't go and buy things just because they're on sale. I don't go shopping randomly just to look for sale items or just to buy things that seem to be perhaps a good deal. If I need a sale to convince me that something is worth having, it's probably not worth having. And even if you take something that's $100 and it's on sale for $50 and you buy it, you just spent $50, you're not actually saving 50, you're spending 50. So unless there was actually something that I'm planning to buy, I have no intentions of indulging in random sale items. Item number 12 is what I'm gonna call redundant technology. Uh, I think that there are a lot of items nowadays, tech items that are really unnecessary, that do things that other things you already have already do, and that are just generally not something that I see any functional purpose for. Uh, a good example would be a smartwatch. I don't own a smartwatch. I will likely never own a smartwatch because I just honestly don't see the point. A smartwatch connects to the smartphone that you already have and does all the same things, but just shows them to you on your wrist. And I'm like, I, I already have a phone. I don't, I don't need another one on my wrist. It seems redundant. Uh, I also have no need or reason to have one of those like, hey Google, wiretap things. Like I'm perfectly capable of turning my lights on and off on my own or starting or stopping a timer or turning on music. I don't need to like yell into the abyss to make a machine do it for me. Hey Google. Okay, Google. Similarly, I have no reason to own a tablet because I already own a phone and a laptop and I don't think that there's anything that a tablet can do that a phone and a laptop can't do. And when it comes to like those like fancy smart rings or bracelets or whatever that monitors your body, I don't know why anybody needs a device to tell them that they've been snoring and farting in their sleep. I just, I don't get it. Item number 13 that I don't buy or use is fabric softener, dryer sheets, laundry scent boosters, all that stinky stuff that you add to your clothing for no real reason. I have news for you. If you do your laundry and you just use laundry detergent and you don't use fabric softener, you don't use bounce sheets, you don't use any of that stuff, do you know what happens? Nothing. Your clothes come out clean and everybody's happy and nothing bad happens. In fact, fabric softener in particular leaves a waxy, greasy residue on your clothing, which breaks down the fibers and wears them out a lot faster. And bounce sheets, I'm not convinced do anything at all. I remember when I was a kid, my mom would always put them in our laundry to stop static, but then I would find them clung to all my clothing via static, so I don't think they actually did anything. And don't get me started on that stinky stuff that everybody puts into their laundry and then they walk into the room and it like punches you in the face like the laundry detergent aisle at Walmart. It's awful, it's stinky. Just wash your clothes with like a couple tablespoons of detergent and move on with your life. The 14th item that I don't buy or own or pay for or have any interest in whatsoever are souvenirs. When I was young, we had family friends that we used to occasionally travel with and these people were obsessed with buying souvenirs everywhere we went. Whatever it is that we were doing, whatever place we were going, they had to buy some sort of a trinket or a knickknack to try to commemorate that experience. And to be honest with you, I didn't understand it back then and I understand it even less now. If I go somewhere, I wanna be fully present. I wanna be fully immersed in whatever activity it is I'm doing, whatever environment I'm in. And I wanna fully experience and appreciate whatever it is that I'm doing. But I don't feel like I need a trinket or like a physical piece of some sort of something to bring home with me to remember that experience. I, I don't see the need for that. I think that largely souvenir type items are often kind of like scammy and scummy. Like they're just selling you some random piece of plastic crap, they're just selling it to tourists to try to appeal to like their emotional whims. And I'm just like, yeah, no thanks, I'm, I'm good. I'm good without that, thank you. I had a great time, I'm going home now. Item number 15 that I no longer buy or pay for is clothing that I don't love. I'm sure we can all relate to this experience, right? Where we go out and we go shopping for clothes and let's say you find a new sweater and it's kind of different than what you would usually wear. Maybe it's a different fit or it's a different color outside of your normal comfort zone and you're not really sold on it, you're not really sure and you try it on and like it looks okay, it looks good on you but it's just not quite you and you decide you're gonna take a gamble on it anyways and you take it home and you wear it once and you just don't really feel like yourself and you wind up shoving it in the back of your closet and never wearing it again. And it's a waste, it's a waste of money, it's a waste of resources. Like for example, these light gray jeans, they fit fine, they look good, they're comfortable. I just don't like light gray jeans and I don't know why I bought them and I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. 
I've come to acknowledge that I am a simple person. I'm a boring person. I like neutral colors. I'm most comfortable in gray or white or black or maybe a little bit of navy blue, but I'm just not big into bright colors. Even though I might put on a bright sweater and feel like it looks okay on me, I'm just not going to feel comfortable in it because it's just not me and it's going to wind up being a waste. So if I put something on and I'm not 100% sold on it, if I don't absolutely love it, I'm not going to buy it. Item number 16 that I don't buy or use is perfume. I'm not sure if you'll be able to assume this just from looking at me, but I smell really, really good. Like, I smell good all the time. I smell like coconut shampoo and deodorant and fresh laundry detergent. In fact, I'm told often that I smell like clean laundry and it's a weird flex, but I kind of like it. I don't think you need to add perfume to your body to smell good. On the contrary, I think that just being clean, showering, washing your hair, washing your laundry makes somebody smell really good. It's light, it's airy, it's fresh. But perfume, even nice smelling perfume, is so overbearing. You walk into a room and it like punches people in the face. It's not pleasant. It's also not healthy for you. A lot of them have like a weird ingredients and stuff you probably shouldn't be putting on your skin. And so I do like to smell really nice, but I smell really nice by just keeping myself clean. I don't feel the need to douse myself in like, oh, to old lady. The 17th item that I don't buy, don't pay for, and don't own is a TV. Sometimes people walk into my home and they look around and they're like, wait a minute, you don't have a TV. And it kind of throws them off a little bit. Or they say, oh, you must have one upstairs, right? And no, I don't have a TV. I, I'm not like staunchly anti-TV. It's nothing like that. I just personally am not somebody who enjoys watching a lot of TV. I don't find that there are a lot of shows on TV that pique my interest. And on the odd occasion that there is something that I'm interested in, I just watch it on my laptop. I don't really need an additional piece of technology. Again, I think this kind of falls into that redundancy thing I was discussing earlier, where it's just like, I don't see the need to have another screen that does the same thing that the screen I already have already does. I also don't think that a TV makes a visually appealing focal point in a room. It's just not really my vibe. So, I mean, I guess I understand it if you have a family and you all like to gather together and watch movies or watch TV, but as somebody who lives alone, I'm perfectly happy just to watch the odd thing here and there on my laptop, and I don't feel the need to invest money in a big TV. Item number 18 is another one that I'm gonna have to make a conscientious effort here to restrain myself from going off on a rampage about. I could rant about this forever. It's something that really boils my blood. Maybe that should make a whole separate video about this. If you wanna hear about that, go ahead and drop me a comment down below. But item number 18 is banking fees. I'm gonna to try to make this brief. Banks are multi-billion dollar corporations. They make those billions and billions of dollars thanks to you and your money. When your paycheck gets deposited into your bank, it's not just sitting there waiting for you, just basking in the sunlight. The bank takes that money and they then use it to loan to other people and they make interest on that. They take your money and they use it to fund mortgages, they use it to fund credit cards, lines of credit, and they're earning a nice hefty interest rate on all of that money, which is where they make their billions of dollars. Without you and me, they couldn't do that. And then all of a sudden you need to access your money. You need to pay your bills, you need to take out some cash. And you go, knock, 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 hi, hello, can I have my money please? And they say, yeah, sure, no problem. That'll just be $12.95 a month, or that'll be $4 a transaction, or that'll be $1 per e-transfer. Fuck that, absolutely not. You are doing them a favor by allowing them to hold your money. They are doing nothing for you in return. Most likely, if you're using a regular checking or savings account, you're not earning any interest. You're earning a very, very, very tiny amount of interest, and they're getting rich off of your hard-earned money. There is no chance in hell that I'm gonna pay them for the privilege of accessing my money. Zero chance. It's not even about the money, it's about the principle here. So I do not pay monthly banking fees. I do not pay transaction fees. I will not pay to use my own debit card. I will not pay to send an e-transfer or receive an e-transfer. And I make it abundantly clear to my bank that I can replace them in a heartbeat with a shoebox under my bed. Is it safer to keep your money in the bank? Yes. Do I actually have money in a shoebox under my bed? No. But that's not the point. The point is that I don't need them half as much as they need me. To take that a point further, it's 2023 and there are so many small banks now that offer you free accounts, that offer you no monthly fees, no transaction fees, no bullshit fees, that if you're currently paying something to your bank for the privilege of accessing your own money, it is time to switch. Screw that. Think about it like this. If you spend $12 a month on an account fee, even just $12, at the end of the year, that's $144 you've given your bank for absolutely no reason. Think about what you could do with $144 every year that would bring you more joy than just giving it to the bank. You could quite literally light $144 in cash on fire and watch it burn into soot, and at least you'd be more entertained than you would giving it to those son of a bitches. So no banking fees, no transaction fees. They either give me a free account or I'm switching to somebody who will. Oh, I feel better now. So much for not going on a rant. <laughs>
The 19th thing that I don't buy or pay for is a car wash. Honestly, I just don't get the point. I don't care that much about my car. Like I take care of it and I get its oil changed, but I don't really see the need to wash the exterior of it. If you park outside in the rain, you get a free car wash. Even if it's really dirty and you wanna wash it, you can do it at home with a little bit of soap in the hose. I don't see the need to spend like $15 to go through that big thing that goes and like throws soap all over the place. Yeah, no, no reason to do that. Not interested, not gonna spend money on that, don't care. And finally, item number 20 that I don't buy, I don't use, I don't pay for, I don't support, I don't want anything to do with are MLM products. For anybody out of the loop, MLM stands for multi-level marketing and it is all those brands where people try to peddle all sorts of crap to you. You know like that girl that you went to high school with and you haven't seen in like 30 years and she just sends you these unsolicited messages on Facebook full of emojis like, hey boss babe, I'm trying to save your life with these supplement pills. Basically, it's companies like Mary Kay, Arbon, Avon, Sensi, uh, I think it's called Young Living. There's some like essential oil crap. That stuff is awful. First of all, the products are terrible, like all the time. In fact, anybody you ever see recommending those products online, if you click on their profile, 10 out of 10 times, they're just a representative trying to sell their own products. But even beyond the products being terrible, the business side of it is the scummiest, scammiest thing you could ever imagine. They are out and out pyramid schemes. They are cults. Right? The people who sell these products don't make the majority of their money from selling products. They make the majority of the money from trying to recruit you to sell products under them. So if there's one person at the top and they recruit a few people and those people recruit a few people and those people recruit a few people, what do you have there? You have a pyramid scheme. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se. It's The companies are predatory. They sell people false hopes of entrepreneurship, of financial freedom, of self-employment. The vast majority of people who invest in these businesses wind up losing money in the long run, not earning money. And instead of cutting their losses and trying to improve their lives, they just try to drag everybody else down with them. And it's not somebody you want to associate with. These are not products you want to buy. These are not people you want to support. And uh, yeah, don't get involved with MLMs because it's a cult and it's a pyramid scam and they're only going to ruin your life. Is that harsh? Probably. Did I offend someone? Probably. I seem to be really good at ruffling feathers and honestly, I don't care. But uh, yeah, those are the 20 items that I am not buying, paying for, owning, supporting, or caring at all about in 2023. Was I unnecessarily harsh with some of them? Maybe, probably. You'll have to tell me in the comment section down below. If you completely disagree with any of the things I said, feel free to let me know. Furthermore, if there's anything that you are not buying or paying for or having any interest in in 2023, and I didn't mention it in this video, feel free to let me know that in the comment section below as well. If you enjoyed this video at all, if you found it at all entertaining or helpful, or you just enjoyed my rants, go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out the channel and I really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Also hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. Other than that, thank you guys so much as watching for always, as watching. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I really appreciate it. Take care. I'll see you next week. Bye.